Hello, welcome back to class. We are focusing on measurement and our topic today is the trapezium rule. Our two objectives for this class are to describe the trapezium rule and our second objective is to use the trapezium rule to calculate the area under a curve. First, we're going to begin by looking at a trapezium and look at how we find the area of that trapezium using formula. So first, here's our trapezium. We have the parallel sides A and B, and we have our height, our perpendicular height H. And in this case, in order to find the area, area being half the height, that is the perpendicular height, times the sum of the parallel sides, then we have half times height, which is 5, times the sum of the parallel sides, which is 8 and 12, and that gives us 5 times 8 plus 12. 8 plus 12 is 20. Let me just write this a little better. 8 plus 12, that gives us 20. So we have 5 times 20 over 2. 5 times 20, of course, is 100. And 100 divided by 2 gives us 50 centimeters square. So that would be the area of our trapezium. It's important that we review it because the area of a trapezium relates directly to the trapezium rule. Now that we remember how to do this, let's move on to a question that requires us to apply this. Now here we have a speed time graph, notice the meters per second, and on our x-axis we have our time in seconds. And our question is to estimate the distance traveled in the first 30 seconds. That is, we want to estimate the distance traveled from this point to this point. Um, notice the shape of the graph. The shape of the graph, graph is irregular. Uh, we cannot apply a single formula to this, but we can figure out the distance, the, the, the distance traveled. Um, note, since we have to work out the area, we can break this shape into pieces, and by calculating the area of those individual pieces, we can find the area under this graph. In a speed time graph, the distance traveled is found by calculating the area under the graph. So let's break up the shape a little bit into some smaller shapes and look at them. So let's, for example, make a rectangle here. So here we have a rectangle from 20 to 30 seconds. And from this point on, we can probably just make estimate these as, as um, trapeziums. I'm just going to put that one there. So here we have a trapezium starting from here to there. It's more of like a triangle. Um, there. That's a, more of a proper trapezium. And here's another one. So the idea is to find the area of these one, two, three, four shapes and using that area to, to estimate the distance traveled. So the first one, here, this rectangle, it would have a base 20 to 30. That would give us a base of 10 and a height of 15. And so 10 times 15 would give us 150. Now we need to find the area of this trapezium here. And we're going to apply the formula for area of a trapezium, which is half the height, we're going to use this as the height. So um, 20 take away 15 gives us 5. This is also 5. And this one here is going to be 10. So 20 take away 15 is 5. And now we look at the height. This height would be 15. And this one is approximately halfway between 10 and 15. That's 12.5. So we can say half. The height, which is 5, so it's half times 5, um, and the sum of the parallel sides, 15 plus 12.5. And that would give us, when we work it out, um, 68.75. Punch the numbers into your calculator and um, verify that the answer would be 68.75. And now we go to the next one. Here, 
this would still have a height of 12.5 on this side. And then this one, um, this line here would be halfway between 5 and 10, which would be 7.5. So because it's not all the way up there, I'm going to estimate this one as 7. And so we are going to apply that same formula again, half times 5, and then the sum of the parallel sides, 7 plus 12.5. And that gives us, uh, when we punch that into our calculator, 48.75. Here again, this shape is more of a triangle. So I'm going to calculate it um, using the area of a triangle. So the base here would be 10, using half base times height. The base would be 10, so it's half times 10 times our vertical height, which would be 7. And that would give us 5, um, half of 10 is 5, 5 times 7 gives us 35. And so now, to find the total distance traveled, what we need to do is to add up all of these numbers, which is to add 35 for this one, plus 68.75, well, 48.75, if we go in in order, plus 68.75, plus 150. And punching these into our calculator, 150, plus 68.75, plus 48.75, plus 35 would give us 302.5. And since our unit is in meters, then this would be meters. And so this is one way in which we can apply the trapezium rule. So what exactly is the trapezium rule? Notice that we started off with a, script, with a rectangle here, and then we had two trapeziums in the middle or trapezoid in the middle, and then this part more resembled, of a, resembled a triangle, so we use a triangle here. Notice, for example, that this part of the diagram has a space where something is calculated and nothing is there. Let me just point that out. Right here in the gap. And this one was below. So the 302 that we got here is actually an estimate of what the, um, the, the distance was and not a true calculation. It's a close estimate, but it's still an estimate. It is not the exact value since we have to be deal, since we, we had to deal with these two errors right here. The trapezium rule then is an idea derived from calculus where we can use algebra to calculate the area under a curve. And so given a curve, so we call this curve um, y equal x to some power. Then what we do is that we look at the y values between the two points that we're measuring from. So if we want to find the area between two x values, a and b, then we look at the corresponding y values for a and the y values for b and all the y values in between. So this is how we apply the trapezium rule in a highly simplified form for you to deal with and digest easily. First, we take the first height, that is the first y value, corresponding to the number that we have. We are finding it between a and b. So the first value that we have, we look at the first y value, and then we look at the last y value. And we find we add those two values and find half of it. So half the sum of the first and the last y values. So this is the first one, this is the last one. We add them together, find half of it, and then we add all the other y values in between. So here, let's go again. If we want to find the area between a and b, then what we do is that we look at the y value for a, we look at the y value for b, add those two together, Divide them by divide that answer by two and add all the other y values in between. So here we'd have y0, y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, 
and as many as you have until you get to your last y value corresponding with b let's see how it applies to a question and it's much more easier than it sounds so we have here the velocity of a car at time t during a five hour journey is described by the equation v is equal to 30 t minus 2, 2 t square our aim is to calculate the total distance traveled by the car during the five hour journey so here we have one, two, three, four, five hour journey, and this graph represents the movement of the speed of the car. So in applying the trapezium rule, what we do is this. Half the sum of the first and the last y values. So these would be our x values, and these would be our y values. The first and the last are zero and 100. So zero plus 100 plus all the other y values in between. And what are the y, other y values in between? They are these. 20, that's 28, plus 52, plus 72, plus 88. And all we have to do now is to add all of, all of these values together. So 0 plus 100 divided by 2 gives us 50. And so we're adding 50 plus 28 plus 52 plus 72 plus 88. And that gives us 290 kilometers. Remember, if you want to find the distance traveled on a speed time graph, you must find the area under that part of the graph. And so in this question, this car would have traveled approximately 290 kilometers. Remember, it's an approximate answer because we're using approximations. Um, we're not using, if we use algebra, such as calculus, then we would have gotten a more exact answer. But I'm telling you, this answer comes pretty close. So what happens is that this shape would have been divided into various trapezium. And you could find the area of each of those. And having found those areas, add them together and you would have gotten the estimate for your answer. But this method, using it like this, goes out very, very much faster. So the idea is half the sum of the first and the last. So half the sum of the first and the last. This is the first. This is the last. And then add all the other y values in between. This is how we use the trapezium rule to calculate the area under, under a curve. And, it's a, and it is especially used when you're finding, when you're working with speed time graphs and you want to find the total distance traveled. That's it for now. Until next time, thank you for watching and continue working hard as you prepare for your exams.